Hi guys, Paul Jennings here from playcajon.org. I decided that I was gonna do something that uh, I haven't really done before in terms of a video and I'm gonna respond to your comments. So I've prepared uh, five comments and the first one is from a user called B00I00D and his comment was, so these strokes are similar technically to Jemby strokes. Well, um, I guess yes and no. Uh, on the Cajon, uh, the strokes that I teach, some of them are probably very similar to the same techniques that you might use on a Jemby, uh, particularly the slap tone uh, is probably very similar where, you, where your hand hits the, the cajon or the djembe and your fingers kind of bounce off it. Um, so that one is probably quite similar. Um, yeah, I mean, techniques on hand drums definitely are similar across the board, uh, just really depending on the drum um, and the skin and the playing surface and such like. So I hope that answers your question there. Thomas Pepino. Es peruano no australianu. Um, and I'm guessing what he means is that the cajon is Peruvian and not Australian. Now, uh, I am aware of this, uh, that the cajon is Peruvian. I think probably the Australian thing is due to the fact that he, that um, Thomas Pepino probably thinks I'm Australian. And, and I'm actually from Scotland uh, just to clarify, um, I've never actually been to Australia. The Lemon MD, and he says, I'm looking at getting a Pearl Primo box cajon. I just wanted to know if it's worth $130. Um, definitely worth $130. If you can get any cajon in that price range, it's gonna be worth the money. I mean, Spending 130 bucks isn't gonna get you an amazing cajon probably. Well, you never know. There's all sorts of cajons out there, but it's definitely gonna get you a box you can use and, um, and certainly learn on uh, and possibly even gig on, you never know. And the Pearl Primos are, are pretty decent for the price. So yeah, it's worth 130 bucks. The next comment is from Longbow and he says, you should continue counting as you play. And he's referring to when I count at the start of a groove that I'm teaching. Um, well, the main reason that sometimes I don't continue really is, is that I don't believe that counting while you're playing is a good habit to get into. I think it's a good thing to use if you're, if you're playing in a band and you have 36 bars of solo and you're not quite sure what that is while you're practicing maybe counting it is a good is a good thing so you so you get a, a frame of reference but really counting while you play for me is not a technique that I would like to teach I, I think it's handy to use when you're learning things and also if you're reading music um, you're gonna need to count the bars and everything else but when you're just playing by ear or learning grooves and techniques, um, it's really more of a feel thing that I'm trying to teach um, where you actually feel uh, the number of bars and everything like that. And, and that might sound complicated and crazy at the moment, but the more you play and the more you learn, that will make sense. Okay, the last comment I have is from Drew Hopeful and he has a Kopf S series snare cajon and he's asking, is this cajon safe to play on the beach? And that's a pretty good question. Um, yeah, pretty much. Uh, it depends really. You probably don't wanna put the cajon on wet sand. If you put maybe like a towel under it or something, it'll be fine. Uh, it, on the dry sand, it'll be totally fine. Don't worry about it. Um, and have fun on the beach. I wish I was on the beach playing the cajon. Yeah, so there's the comments that I chose from. There was another point that I wanted to mention and I see it all across YouTube and whether it's a cajon video or it's a, a bass player or a guitarist or 
people are always saying, oh, this technique is is BS and, and not right. And my kind of take on that is is that there really is no correct technique to playing an instrument. I used to play with a, a fiddle player called Ashley McIsaac from Canada, and he played uh, a right-handed fiddle left-handed. So the string, so it was kind of like playing a guitar upside down. So he learned completely the opposite way. And that to me, and he was an amazing player, and that to me shows that there really is no correct stern technique that you have to go for. The techniques that I teach on playcajon.org and my videos are my techniques and I wanna share them with you and teach you them. And if you wanna use them, go ahead and use them. Uh, but it's the way I play and uh, it might not be the correct uh, traditional Peruvian or traditional flamenco or traditional anything, but it's the way I've learned how to play the cajon and, and the technique that I play with is, is derived from all kinds of different traditions and styles. And, and I definitely encourage you to, to take from me uh, my technique, what you will. Yeah, there really is no right technique, if that makes sense. Well, thanks for tuning in and uh, I'll, be, I'll be posting another video soon uh, in response to comments and, and things people are saying on YouTube and such like. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. All right, take care.